Natalie Klein, shalom. Oh, and welcome to Israel. Thank you. And welcome to Culture Buzz. We'll Thank you. you. I prefer to go at it's, a, it's really a privilege and an honor having you here with us. You are on your way to the Elat uh, Chamber Music Festival. And we have noticed that during the many promos to this uh, festival, uh, you received uh, lots of uh, limelight, as you deserve. People were quoting from British uh, newspapers that have commended you for being such a wonderful cellist. You know, normally Israelis feel it uh, feel it very difficult to agree with anything written in British newspapers, <laughs> but in this case we are willing to make Hopefully. an exception. <laughs> Natalie, despite of your young age, you have already secured your place as one of the best cellists in the world. How do you do it? I'm... I'm Firstly, I don't think so highly of myself, but perhaps that's important. You know, I'm, I'm self-critical, as I think any serious musician should be. And I have actually as my mentor still very much in my mind the, the late, great Bernard Greenhouse from the Beaux-Arts Trio who died last May who said that it was a lifetime's work to be in this world as a cellist. So that's really how I view my career and my life as a cellist. It's a very, it's not a sprint race at all. It's a slow marathon. And um, each year, I hope I'm understanding a bit more about music generally, about cello playing generally. I learn through, through studying. I learn through teaching myself as well. I learn through hearing many other great cellists I learned through having lessons myself so you know it's a it's a slow slow process um, and not only that you are a wonderful student maybe even uh, toppling your teachers you are also a teacher yeah I know that uh, while in a lot in addition uh, to performing you will be given master classes yeah yes I'm I'm very much looking forward to giving the master classes. I'm passionate about teaching. Um, from, on a selfish level, I'm passionate about it because it helps me understand how to do things better myself. And I often give a lesson and I think right now, if I can be as good a teacher to myself as I hope I am to my student, then I'll improve. So it's a good exercise in really challenging um, challenging technical questions, challenging musical questions. How do I really want to play a phrase? What is this phrase really about? What is this composer really trying to express? What is the score really about? Um, again, it goes back to the first thing I said, it's this constant digging down for more depth, for more meaning, for a deeper understanding of what you're doing, and which for me, the more, the more layers there are, the more joy there is in something, really. And definitely it sounds that you take your music very, very seriously. Yeah. Lucky us. Well, I take music seriously. I take life seriously because I think actually, again, there's more pleasure to be had from things that you take seriously. I've never really understood this, this idea of taking many things lightly and that's how you have a nice life. For me... Uh, take it easy is not an option. Taking it easy. That I have to say, I had this problem when I went to Australia, I was t telling a friend about this, and the saying, there is no worries, and I had some fantastic experiences in Australia, but the no worries thing for me was a, was a problem, because I like, I guess it's the Jewish element, let's face it. The, fam the famous, <laughs> uh, the famous uh, Walt Disney movie, Lion King, Akuna Matata. <laughs> it, it, yeah. No worries. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, yeah, of course we all have to relax, and that's something different. But, but um, digging down, finding, finding new thoughts. This is what really excites me. Yeah. Natalie, you are performing quite extensively in Britain mm. and in Europe. It's your second visit to Israel, but it will be the first time 
Israeli audience will be given the chance to actually listen to you. Yes, yeah, it's my debut in Israel. Which is I'm exciting. Delighted. I'm really thrilled about it. I'm excited to meet Israeli audience from the perspective of a stage. Um, I've wanted to play here for many years and somehow there's been lots of times that things have almost been organized and then they haven't worked out. So. But finally it's about to finally. happen. Yeah. And tomorrow you will give an interview to Galatz. Yeah. I go to the radio. And then you'll uh, take off to Elat. Yeah. This is uh, our equivalent to Down Under. <laughs> <laughs> it will be your first visit. Yeah. Natalie, I've asked you before, before this interview, what is your favorite piece mm. when it comes to cello concerto? Mm. And if I'm not wrong, you mentioned Dvořák, was it? Well, if you talk about cello concertos, yeah, I have to say that Dvořák is high up on, on the list. I think it's the perfect composition, it's a perfect use of the cello against the orchestra. Um, but you have also mentioned other pieces. Yeah. I, I also, as I said to you before as well, do you think this is a... It's okay, we continue. Yeah. Um, that whatever I'm studying at that moment becomes hopefully my new favorite piece. Um, I think you have to have this, this focus on something when you're doing it. Um, and they're constantly changing these pieces as well. So the Dvořák that I, I'm practicing now is different from Dvořák to five or ten years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and you have a new album coming up soon? Yeah, I have in August a new album uh, of pieces by Bloch. So there's Bloch Shlomo, the Song of Solomon, which ah, is this huge, wonderful piece. orchestral tone poem with, with this soaring cello voice inspired by the human voice um, and then taken far beyond it. Um, Shlomo and then there's Voice in the Wilderness which is not a well-known piece actually again for cello obligato and orchestra. Um, three Scenes from Jewish Life by Bloch and then the Bruch Kol Nidre. I wanted to put that on there too. So yeah, it's a, it's a disc seeped in Jewish culture and my imagination of what Jewish soul might be. Natalie, I know that you have cooperated uh, in the past with uh, the Jerusalem Quartet. Yeah, yeah, and again this summer actually we're playing again. Oh, together. Excellent. Yeah. excellent news. And I also noticed that uh, in addition to doing what uh, usually classical musicians do, you also cooperate artistically with authors and choreographers. Yeah, or oh, dancers, yeah, and choreographers, yes. I mean, I've always been interested in all kinds of art forms. Um, and... You are a Renaissance woman. <laughs> yes, there we are. No, I, if one feeds the other for me, I, I, you know, I would get very bored, I think, or I'd get, I'd get stagnant. Um, if I was only focusing on the piece, small pieces I was playing at that time, especially, you know, as a cello, sadly, we have a single line. So either if we're part of chamber music, you know, we're often playing either a beautiful melody or a bass or something, something in between them, or we're playing concerto. But you know, we don't have the richness, of the, of the harmonic richness, for example, of you know, playing playing a solo piano sonata or even perhaps some of the solo violin stuff. So I think. As a cellist, anyway, I'm hungry to sort of go beyond the okay, cello repertoire. But for me as a person, yeah, I'm interested in reading a lot. I'm interested in going to art galleries. I'm interested in what's going on in the theater. And yeah, I, I collaborated with an amazing dancer on a, on a project, um, which had already been choreographed by the famous Jeremy Robbins. This was a piece that we re, yeah, we, um, resuscitated. Um, solo Bach and solo dancer and that was really challenging uh, it was just the two of us on the stage for about 20 minutes and it was kind of like chamber music actually because I, I, I didn't know that much about classical dance or didn't know the intricacies of, of it technically before and I really started to understand you know that it actually has a lot in common 
with with music in the way that it, it sets up form, it sets up structure, and then how do you deviate from that? How do you become expressive through it? What what's the space in between which you can call your own interpretation? Those kind of things really interested me. And the energy level on stage that was great, and there was a kind of spark between between me and the dancer, often which which. I can only compare to chamber music, it's that moment when you think, yes, perhaps at this moment we're feeling or thinking something very similar and we're transmitting something that the audience feels. So that's really interesting. Wow, amazing. Yeah. Uh, Natalie, you were, you are the recipient of many prestigious prizes. We can mention the BBC Young Musician of the Year Award, and also many others. You have already performed at the proms. A few times, yeah. A few times, more than once. Yeah. Thank you. And you teach at the Trinity College I do, of Music? And a little bit at Royal College of Music as well. Um, yes. So uh, you are quite busy. <laughs> Which means we appreciate even more the fact that you have taken the time of coming here sharing your wonderful talent and music with the Israeli audience. It's a real honor. I'm, as I said, I'm so happy to be here. I'm very excited to be playing. And, yeah. So what can we wish uh, Natalie Klein for the future? To come back. To Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. May this be the beginning of a beautiful friendship Thank between you, you and the Israeli audience. And uh, enjoy a lot. Give our love to this uh, and the dolphins. South and city. <laughs> Swim with the dolphins. Maybe they'll come to my concert. I don't know. Hopefully. If I play high pitched notes enough. And come back yeah. as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Shalom. Shalom.